Hey everyone, this is Joe from Joe and Zo Pod, and welcome to our channel. On this channel, we'll be talking all things trading cards. Uh, Zo is my brother, he knows more about the marketplace items, what's going for sale, what's hot, what's not, uh, different things you need to know about that, best ways to sell your cards, best way to get to trade for your cards that you want to add to your collection, all that information. Uh, that will be Zoe's department, and uh, I am more into TTMs. I recently started this TTM hobby, and uh, it's been very exciting for me. Get to go to the mailbox every day and get cards from players that I that I watched growing up, and it's quite a thrill. The stuff you see on the table is some items I've gotten from sending through to teams, um, which is also something you can do for your not necessarily autographs through the mail, but definitely TTM uh, sports memorabilia material. So a typical show for me will usually be showing my TTM um, successes, uh, maybe some other updates, uh, but generally in that uh, area. Um, and uh, every once in a while we'll get something from Zoe who'll be talking more about, like I said before, different marketplace stuff. So today's show, uh, I've seen different articles about this, I've seen different uh, people do their own videos on this subject, but I've yet to find one that really goes step by step and can really show you everything you need to do to get a TTM yourself. So uh, I'm gonna wave my hand over here. And uh, we find ourselves on the Sports Card Forum main page. Sports Card Forum is the website to go to for all the information, uh, for getting addresses for TTM, for being able to track your TTM submissions, uh, for uh, talking to other people in the community, uh, facilitating sport, uh, facilitating trades, all different types of things. Um, and it's completely 100% free, so it's really the best place to go for it. So, how do you start off TTMing? So, first off, you look at what trading cards you have, <laughs> or what uh, what player you'd like to get a like to get a response from. So the first question is, in general, who are you most likely to get a response from? So. The first question you need to ask yourself is, do you want to pay for an autograph? Um, I am not at a stage where I'm enough of a collector to invest uh, money in getting all these autographs. Um, so I've been focusing on the ones who do it for free, uh, which is a tremendous service um, that they do really completely uh, out of the goodness of their hearts. Um, so, you know, send, you send your card in, they autograph it, they send it back. Uh, it's really a tremendous thing, and uh, I very much appreciate it. Um, but uh, there are some of the top players in every sport who who will still uh, return your card through the mail uh, for a fee. So you know anyone who's in the Hall of Fame, anyone who's considered a legend in that sport, uh, they get too much mail to do this for free. Um, also, they know that you are most likely <laughs> going to sell uh, that stuff, or I shouldn't say you specifically, but there's a lot of people who are going to sell their autograph online, um, and therefore they figure why shouldn't they get a piece of the pie as well, which is totally fair also. So they'll charge a fee, could, you know, the, the fees range, I don't want to give a, an amount because it could be affordable, it could be not affordable, you have to check for yourself. Um, so in general, you know, you, who, who are you going to get a response from? You will definitely get a response from some mid to upper level players, there's no question about it, um, that are kind enough to do this. So if you're still looking to get an autograph of, uh, of a good player that you grew up watching, someone that was one of your favorite players growing up, uh, there's a very good chance that you could uh, get, uh, get that player's autograph. So I wanted to today actually walk through with you and show you on the camera what I would do in a typical situation when I'm sending out a TTM. So today I have a card of this is Felix Wright. He was a DB uh, for nine years in the NFL um, with three teams, and he had a pretty decent career. Um, he led the league in interceptions one year. He played in the playoffs most years in his career. So he's, uh, he's definitely a guy who made an impact in the NFL. So let's check him out on Sports Card Forum. So we're going to go to the TTM Manager page, click on that, and now we're gonna look him up. So let's change the sport to football. And let's look up his last name, right? And obviously we're gonna have a lot of different players who <laughs> with the last name right in the NFL. So we're gonna look for Felix Wright and we found him right here. Now these are very, very good numbers. 
Uh, the first number that you see over here is the average time it takes for him to return an autograph. So five days is fantastic. That, that essentially means that the day that he gets it, he sends it back to you. Now that's an average. So it could be that uh, he doesn't necessarily, so he personally to get an average of five um, would have to still do that uh, very quickly. But let's look over here, like Anthony Wright, whose page I'm not gonna click on. So he has an average of 156 days returning. So it could be that a couple times, because uh, all these averages are based off of the submissions that users of the site put in. Um, and I'll show you on the next page. So it could be that a couple users uh, took them, you know, six months to get their card back, and other users it took a couple weeks, and just the average uh, averages out to 156. So even if you have a high number and you don't want to wait that long, it's worth clicking on the name just to make sure. Um, the second number is the percentage. That is the percentage of people who get positive responses um, from Felix Wright, and that's 100%, so obviously that's good. And then the last number is 60. That's how many positive responses he has gotten. So the fact that the fact that excuse me over there the fact that he has a 100 percent rating but he also and a, a five-day re average return but he also has 60 responses means that he is legit uh he's legit doing it fast and he's legit responding so let's click on his name so this is how the page comes up and this is the address that you'll have um so for mr wright this is the average that we have in westlake ohio now some players and you can see, you can look down the list, that he has success after success going all the way back to 2011. Now, there's only one address here for Felix Wright, so that uh, makes it easy for us to uh, decide which way... Um, that makes it easy for us to decide which way... Um, that makes it easy for us to decide which uh, address we should write to. Okay, so now we're going to build our package. So you need envelopes, you need stamps and what i think is a very important thing for me personally is a handwritten note this is uh, something that i write in general to most players i feel it's very important to handwrite it um, it doesn't need, it could be on an index card just something that fits into an envelope very easily but uh, i feel it's important to that if the players are doing this uh, as a favor to you that uh, you just write them a nice card. And again, it doesn't need it. You don't need to kiss up. You don't need to lie to them. <laughs> don't lie and say you were my favorite player and stuff like that. Tell the truth, say, you know, I'm a football fan. Um, I would love if you could sign my card. Thank you so much. Um, if you do have a personal memory of that player or of his team or anything like that, for sure include that. I'm sure they appreciate it. Um, but again, the first thing you wanna do is just write out this little note um, and, uh, and put that in your package okay then this is a number 10 envelope uh, all the different materials that i use and where i got them from i'm going to put in the video description um, so you'll be able to see uh, exactly what i use just in case you have any confusion so this is a regular it's called a number 10 but this is a perfectly normal standard size envelope don't forget to put your return address in the corner so that uh, something happens in the in the mail that they can get back to you and of course you put the player's address right there in the middle you begin to build your package so you have your card and you have your note and then the last thing you want to put in is your self-addressed stamped envelope and this is how the player is going to uh get it back to you there you don't expect them to pay for the stamp in their own envelopes and to label it for you so this is what you send in you have the stamp right here and you put your address there in the middle if you want you can put your address in the return spot as well so that the post office definitely doesn't get confused and sends it somewhere else so um or if they lose it they'll definitely send it back to you but i don't think that's totally necessary and then you're ready to close it up seal it and it is ready to go now some people will put in a little piece of cardboard or something like that um, in order to make sure that the card doesn't bend on the way uh, I've done it sometimes other times I don't bother um, in general I have not found it um, to be an issue uh, usually the cards travel very well surprisingly I was definitely surprised that it works like that um, but uh, in general the cards do travel well um, and uh, and you'll be fine even without putting anything in there. But if it makes you feel more comfortable, uh, you could for sure do that. 
Um, now, how much does this all cost? So for me, doing a calculation of all the money that I spent, it takes me around, a, it costs me around a dollar and 27 cents per package. I'm sure that there are cheaper options. I'm also sure there's more expensive options. Um, so I'm pretty satisfied with that amount. So what that means is that if it's one card, so it costs you $1.27 for that card. But if I have two cards, if I have three cards, then of course the price is divided over that uh, over that amount. And then of course, um, you can put in your submission to the website. You can see over here, Joe and Zoe, that I already put it in and I'm gonna mail it that day. Um, and the status is pending. But if you go down here, this is the last person who was answered by Mr. Wright. So he put it in on June 1st. He, was, he got it back on June 8th. It was a success. He, uh, it automatically calculates how many days it takes. And he put in uh, a comment. He actually has the same card that I do. Now, one more thing that I forgot to mention before is that you should also pay attention to how many cards this player usually assigns. So I only have one card, so I don't uh, really have to ask that question. But uh, for example, here's somebody who uh, put in six cards um, and uh, he, uh, Mr. Wright signed for them and he kept two of them. Um, there's someone who did two of two, one of one, two of three, three of three, four of four over here. So in general, you could be uh, pretty sure that if you send in four cards, um, that uh, that Felix Wright will sign all of them. Um, so you don't need to worry about that. Some players, if you send in too many cards, um, they'll only um, sign some of them or they'll keep some of them. Um, so you just need a, it's another column that you need to pay attention to uh, when you're deciding how many cards uh, to send in. All right, so that's how you send a TTM. And if you're wondering what a response looks like, well then let me wave my hand again. And here is a TTM response. This uh, is postmarked Westchester, but it actually came from Greenwich, Connecticut. And I know that because I've already opened the envelope and I know who's in there. And we have in here, Mr. Mark Johnson. He signed two of two in eight days. Let's see if I can get move the camera to give you a better view of those cards. Now, one thing I'd like to do on this channel um, is to tell you a little bit more about the players that I get uh, the CTMs from. Um, in general, uh, most of the players that I'm gonna get from were guys who were not what you would consider uh, big successes in the major leagues, even though, to be honest, as we'll talk about with, with Mark Johnson, making it to the major leagues is uh, already success uh, in and of itself. Um, but because of that, you know, these guys are really lost to history, but they are part of the history of Major League Baseball and the other sports, the respective sports that they play in. And I'd like to just tell you a little bit about each player um, as I get a response back. So this is Mark Johnson. Again, he signed two of two in eight days. Um, he was first base and outfielder for the Pittsburgh Pirates, the uh, Anaheim Angels, um, and the New York Mets. Uh, he attended college at Dartmouth. Uh, he was a great athlete. Not only did he play baseball for Dartmouth, he also played quarterback, and he actually still holds uh, many records in the Ivy League for quarterbacks. Um, he was drafted in the 42nd round by the Pirates, and then he went back to school, and then he was drafted the next year in the 20th round, again by the Pirates. So obviously the Pirates liked him a lot. Um, but again, this guy was a 42nd round draft pick, and then he was a 20th round pick. Um, not so common for these guys to make the majors. Um, so he made the majors, he was in the majors from 1995 to 2002. So parts of seven seasons, uh, minus one year that he played in Japan, but he still did play high level professional baseball in that time. So we're talking about parts of seven seasons, six parts of six seasons in the majors, plus that year in Japan. Um, his career numbers is 0.5 war. He hit uh, for an average of 232 with 38 homers, 137 RBIs, and a 739 OPS. His best season was in 1996 when he was playing for the Pirates and he played in 127 games. He hit 274 with 13 homers and 47 RBIs, so a pretty decent uh, season there. Um, and then in 2002, uh, he retired from baseball. Uh, no specific reason given. It sounds like a guy who uh, had you know, worked hard 
uh, done what he wanted to do and uh, wanted to go out on his own terms. He had been bouncing around uh, between the majors and the minors for a few years at that point. Um, and uh, he retired in 2002, at the end of 2002. And according to Wikipedia, uh, he is a trader on Wall Street. So uh, definitely an interesting guy um, and a guy who I don't really have memories of playing, but uh, definitely made an impact in the major leagues. Um, and that's Mr. Mark Johnson. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, give it a thumbs up. Uh, please send me a comment. Uh, please uh, contact us. You can email us at joeandzopod at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing from you. If you like this video, what we can do better, what you would like to see from us on this channel. Uh, I know this video is a little longer, uh, but that's just because there's an intro and giving all the TTM information. Hopefully videos in the future will not uh, be this long, or if you want them to be this long, please let me know. Um, but uh, either way, I hope you guys enjoyed. And um, until next time, this is Joe and Zoe signing off.